you would turn your Bibles to the book of Psalms, in the 25th chapter of the book of Psalms, we're going to study a little bit David's prayer to the Lord. He was in much conflict, and uh, he had enemies on every side, which David had this often. Uh, it was a problem, and, and David uh, cries out to the Lord here, and I think this morning that, uh, as I mentioned in my request this morning, we need to cry out to the Lord and ask uh, that he would uh, uh, encourage our hearts and uh, strengthen us, and we know this morning, and I was thinking this as uh, we were praying, the, the Lord told uh, his disciples that he was going to leave them, right? but he would send a comforter. Now we have no reason, we have no reason not to be comforted because the comforter is here and uh, he speaks to our hearts. And I pray this morning that he will speak to each one of our hearts this morning as we read God's word. It's not what I'm going to say or anything that will do a whole lot of good, but God's word is true. And God's word will speak to our hearts. If we'll listen. Amen. So Psalms 25, David says here unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Mm -hmm. O my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemy triumph over me. Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress without a cause. Amen. <clears throat> Show me thy ways, O Lord, teach me thy paths, lead me in the, thy tr truth, and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation, on thee do I wait all the days. Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercy and thy loving kindness, for they have been ever of old. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor the transgressions according to thy mercy. Remember thou me. For the goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore will he teach sinners in the way. The meek will be he the meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his ways. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimony. With that, this morning, this is an assurance this morning with all the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth and unto such as keep his covenant and his testimony. So we this morning have no reason not to get the blessings of the Lord. Amen. We know his, we know his word. We know uh, what he has asked us to do. And so as we study this this morning, we might keep that in mind. Uh, it mentions here not to be ashamed. And this is something this morning that I think is, that is flooding the world with the Christians. It is that they're ashamed that they might say something that will offend a sinner or offend one of their good fellow workers or one of their good buddies or something of this nature. They're afraid that they're going to offend. So right. we need to keep these things in mind. But David here in verse 1 of the chapter 25 says, Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Now, unto anyone this morning that is praying uh, or asking God's blessings, they need to realize that the only place that they can go to is at the, the feet of Jesus. Amen. And if they can, they can come there and ask what they will. And he's promised us if we are living, trying to live right for him and serve him, listen, he hears our prayers and he answers our prayers. And so we notice here in Psalms, uh, according to this, in Psalms 86, I would that you turn with me just a minute or just listen to me read. But in 86, 1, he says, O Lord, God of my salvation, I cry day and night before thee. That's where, that's where we ought to be. And, and that's not down on our knees and on the floor or, 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 or whatever. But listen, we can cry to God in our hearts day and night. We can always 
have his presence there with us. And this is what David is saying. He says, O Lord, God of my salvation, I cry day and night before thee. Let my prayer come before thee. Incline thy ear unto my cry. He said, Lord, hear my cry this morning. And that's this morning. We need to ask the Lord to hear our cries. And we need to put forth a cry. We Amen. need to put forth a loud cry. And let everybody know this morning that we're praying for the church. And we're praying for the brothers and sisters. We're praying for those that are lost. Listen, we got people we know of this morning that say they have never accepted the Lord. Or the Lord has never spoke to their hearts. Listen, we, uh, you know, there's, we just had one, a boy dying in the community, 53 years old, just had right. a fatal heart attack and is gone and have no evidence of ever uh, serving the Lord. And so that's, that's the thing we need to cry out to the Lord also. Amen. And he says in verse three, for my soul is full of trouble and my life draweth nigh unto the grave. I am counted with them that go down into the pit. I am as a man that hath no strength. And this, this morning, that is what the devil would like for us to have this morning, that feeling of no strength, no, right. no desire, no nothing to do with God and, and, and just to give up and sit down and, and say it's through. But listen, this morning, the, the psalmist says unto thee, Lord, do I, I cry, I lift up my soul to thee, and then in verse 2, he says, O oh my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed, and let not my enemy triumph over me. And this, this word ashamed, it catches us so much off guard. Uh, you know, a lot of times, even in this, these, this holiday season that they're, they're using, everybody comes, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. You find yourself, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Listen, we shouldn't be, we shouldn't be ashamed to say, listen, uh, you know, look, can I tell you something about Christmas? Mm -hmm. uh, because we know, I don't put my approval on Christmas. Amen. Uh, but still, sometimes somebody come up and say, well, I uh, hope you have a Merry Christmas. I go, yeah, you too. But see, <clears throat> I don't believe that. Right. And, uh, uh, and I should be more like, well, okay, or something like that. And let them know, hey, there's something wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, and try to explain to them because it might get their interest in me and say, well, what, why don't you do something like that? But we need to not be ashamed of the Lord. And, you know, we, we so many times have the opportunity, even as we uh, are uh, out in the public or something like that, and uh, we have the opportunity to show our, our love towards our God by even lifting up our, 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 our voices in prayer for, for our food that we eat or for, for the blessings that he's blessed us with, even the things that uh, just even saying, thank you, Lord, for that. Uh, I mean, there's so many times in our, in our everyday encounter with other people, we can, we can praise the Lord and not be ashamed of it. And so here the, the psalmist says here, oh, my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemy triumph over me. And I, I want you to see something here this morning in, in 2 Timothy. If you would, turn there with me just a minute. And I want to read something to you, what, what uh, the Paul uh, told Timothy in, in, uh, in, in 2 Timothy. I believe it's 12. Notice here what he says. Uh, well, in verse 11, he says to Paul, Paul says unto Timothy, Wherefore, Whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. Now listen, one that is appointed an apostle, one that has been called of God. Listen, he has he needs to take a strong stand against just being ashamed because listen, he's got to get up in, in front of a, of a people and sometimes it's out on the streets or wherever it is and, and say to these people, hey, Listen, you need to be saved. You need to know about God. You need to hear His Word and not to be ashamed. Amen. These are, these, are, these are trying times for people that are trying to get out and do these things. But Paul, Paul says here in verse 13, uh, uh, and all in, in verse 12, For the which cause I also suffer these things. It's a sufferer. Sometimes, it, you know, when, when you uh, are trying to uh, be a, a servant to someone or trying to help someone, and knowing that they disagree with you, it's, it's, it's a suffering. But he says here, he says, For the which cause I also suffer these things, nevertheless, I am not ashamed. 
For I know whom I have believed Amen. and am persuaded that he is able to keep that, his, your soul, keep that which, which I have committed unto him against that day. Amen. And so this morning, we don't need to be ashamed of Jesus and of God because, listen, what he says was, uh, later on there, in, uh, I believe it's in John, he says, if you're ashamed <coughs> of me, I'll be ashamed of you. Right. And now, and that's not saying, hey, you're going to be lost. But I'm going to tell you what this morning, we're going to have to stand before God one of these days. And Jesus is going to be there. And listen, I don't want him to be ashamed of me. I don't right. want him to, 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 to have anything that he can say that would, would hinder me from being close to, to him. And so he says, if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. And so that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a terrible thing this morning to think about the Lord Jesus Christ being ashamed of you when he went to the cross of Calvary and died on the cross of Calvary. Amen. Sins. And so Paul saying here, uh, I mean, the, the psalmist saying here, Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress without a cause. Now, over in chapter 22, you can just look right over there in, in verse 7. I want you to look at something. All in verse 20, uh, chapter 22, verse 7, it says, All they that see me lag me to scorn. They shoot out their lips, they shake the head, saying, he trusted on the Lord that he trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighteth in him. But thou art he that took me out of the womb. Thou didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breast. And so you yes. see these, and I'm sure your 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 uh, your uh, Bibles has got those little stars. And this is referring to Jesus Christ on the cross when he says here. Uh, but I am as a worm and no man a uh, reproach to men and despise the people. And here in verse 7, And they see me, laugh me to scorn, they shoot at their lips, they shake their heads, saying, He trusted in God that he would deliver him. And as, they, as Jesus was being crucified, they went by the cross there, shaking their heads and said, Hey, he's trusted in, in them. Let, let them see if God and, and Moses and all of them will come and help him down. Right. And, and listen, Jesus was not ashamed to lay there or hang there and die for me and you. And so this is something this morning that we need to think about is being ashamed of Christ. Now, again, he, he says here, uh, uh, let not let yet in verse three in our lesson, let ye let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress without a cause. And this, these people that were wagging their heads and and sticking out their lips and all this at Jesus. These these are the ones he's talking about that needs to be ashamed. They need to be ashamed, and people, we need to be ashamed when we're ashamed. If you get my point, Amen. We need to be ashamed when we're ashamed because that's not no way to be not a Christian. Because if you're depending upon the Lord Jesus Christ to to uh, to when when the when. When he calls, when God calls, and, and you're depending on to, to go to heaven, you're depending on Jesus Christ's blood, and you don't need to be ashamed of that. You just don't need to be ashamed. Amen. And so, show me in verse four. He says, "Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths." Now we need to know the way that the Lord has us to go. And we need to know his path. And we got a, we have got a GPS right here. Right. And it will tell us every turn that we need to make. It will tell us every way that we need to go. Amen. And uh, you know, uh, that's that that is the the one of the things that I can point to any man that, or woman or, or person that is that is lost. You have got a path here. You have got a highway here. You have got a road here that you can follow that will lead you to where that Jesus Christ will, will come and talk to you and the Holy Spirit will come and talk to you. And listen, that's, that's it. Amen. And we don't need nothing else to guide us. We've got it right here. And so he says, show me thy ways, O Lord, and teach me thy paths, and lead me in thy truth, and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation, and on thee do I wait all the day. So here we are this morning, and, and David is speaking 
for me and for you and for all of us, hey, we're depending upon the Lord to, to show us His ways and to uh, uh, the way uh, to for our truth and teach us. For He says, for thou art the God of my salvation. So remember in verse 6 it says, Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindness, for they have been ever of old. Amen. Now, in, in Psalms, in Psalms 103, we have a scripture that I, if I get to it real easy, I'd like to read to you. 103. And it's verse, uh, verse 15. 103, verse 15. It says, for as, as for man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourish. For the wind passeth over, and I think this wind refers to days, but the, for the wind passeth over it, and it is gone. And the place thereof shall know it shall not, shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting Amen. upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto children's children. And so get all of that. It's a mouthful. It's a brain full. He says right here, he says it from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto children's children. People, that's a promise. That's a promise. And he promised us uh, also in there that he would work on those third and fourth generations. And so if we serve God, listen, we have this promise that he will be with our children and our children's children. Amen. And, and from generation to generation. And so this morning, we don't need to be ashamed of the Lord. We need to serve him. We need to... Uh, walk in the way that he would have us to walk and to uh, to remember all of his word. Now he says here in verse 7, notice, remember not the sins of thy youth, of my youth, nor th th my transgressions according to thy mercy. Remember thou me. Ask us. Uh, let me see, I can turn to... Uh, for thy goodness sake, O Lord, good and upright is the Lord. Therefore will, will he teach sinners in his way. Now in, in chapter, in, in verse, uh, chapter 51, if you would, if you want to turn or just listen. But in verse 1 of chapter 51 of the book of Psalms, he says, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Amen. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin, for I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. And he says, Behold, I was shaken in, a, in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. So we're shaken in iniquity, we sin, we come short, and we need the Lord this morning. We need to cry out unto him. We need to do as David has done and say, Lord, have mercy on me. And, and, and notice here, as you're, as you're praying, you're asking him to forgive you and and bless your children and your children's children. And now on in verse 8 he says, Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore will he teach sinners in the way. The meek will he guide in judgment. And the meek will he teach his ways. And so, you know, being meek, a lot of people, a lot of people will, will scoff at somebody for being meek. And they'll make fun of them because they're meek and timid. But listen, that is a plus in God's eyes. Amen. Being meek and humble is what God likes. And he says, I'll bless those. And he says, the meek will he guide in judgment. And the meek will he teach his ways. 
All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. For thy name's sake, O Lord, pardon my iniquities, for it is great. And this morning my iniquities are great, my sins are great, and I know this morning that I, I try to serve the Lord, but still, all in all, I fail miserably. And I want to continue reading just a little bit more here, if you would. I, want to, I wanted to uh, show you something, if I can, this morning uh, concerning these, these things being a shame and, and what it does to people. And this word I looked up in, uh, uh, this word here in uh, uh, the scriptures that we were talking about, and it, the word was transgress. And he says in verse 3, he says, ye, ye have it none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed with transgress uh, without. And I, I looked this word transgress up. And one of the words, one of the words that transgress calls for was, it was to break the law and the commandments. But it also is to sin and to offend against and to cross or vex. And I, I thought of vexing as I, as I was talking, I was thinking about Solomon. And I wanted to show you something here this morning about what this vexing does in Second Peter. If you if you want to just turn with me to Second Peter or uh, just listen to me as I read it, I'll get over to it. But this is vexing, and this is this is this is this goes along with this is some of the things that denial and all of the Lord because. You remember as Lot went down to Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, I, I want you to see this. In uh, 2 Peter 2, uh, notice in the verse 7, uh, or, or verse 6, And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, and making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly, and delivered just Lot. Now Lot was love. Lot was just, and I believe that Lot, that just don't mean just him, but it was he was just before God, because if it was just Lot, he wouldn't have had it, no family to go out with him. But anyway, just, uh, just Lot vexed with the filthy conversations of the wicked. Now this is this is why we 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 sometimes uh, ashamed of the Lord. And we 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 won't we won't confess them to other people. And before long, we're we're in a crowd where that uh, we're ashamed to confess it. And this is what happened to Lot. Lot did not tell nobody down there about about God. He didn't tell them anything. Right. But now he says here that his his soul was vexed. Now notice. For that righteous man dwelleth among them, and seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. Now this is this is where this is this is a, a, the beginning of uh, when you get into a a denial of, uh, and afraid to confess and, and, and admit to people that you are a Christian. And and when you get in a crowd like that, this is what lot them. And he says here, and, it, and he in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knowing how to deliver the godly out of temptation. Amen. Now, how did he deliver them? Well, he destroyed a whole city. He destroyed two cities. But listen, he got the lot out. And the thing of it is, this morning when I see this, I know when I, if I got in that shape with a vexed soul, he's going to do something to get me out. Right. And that's the same way with everybody. When they get in that condition, God is going to do something because he did, he did Lot. And Lot was just another human being like us. And he got down there in such a shape that he didn't know anything but to try to make money on something. But he, anyway, he says... The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust until the day of judgment to be punished. And so 
here's 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 the thing. You see what? When we get in that condition, then we get in with a crowd that's in that condition, and the thing of it is, we're not a witness for them. We're, and we're just, in other words, we're we're a we're a friend to the devil. Right. And we're helping we're helping the devil encourage them to live without without salvation. And so it's 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 a dangerous thing for us to do that. But look look what what's what's influencing. And the thing of it is, those that you influence like that, one of those may influence some of your children or some of your grandchildren right and you see what it leads to and this is why that that, that he t told david about uh his children's children hey you knew what you're supposed to and he'll protect your children you may not be here on this earth but you do what you're supposed to do and it won't this thing won't happen like that but the thing of it is this morning if it, it, and it, and it's, just, it's such a it's such a it's such a sad thing, and it's such a thing that that carries on and carries on and carries on, and 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 we just don't put a stop to it like we should. And so this this is something that that, that I, I I seen in a great in a great in a greater way this being the shame of the Lord, right? Because it just keeps on it keeps on, and, and the more you're ashamed, the more that you encourage the sinner to be ashamed. And, and you take a stand somewhere or another and say, I'm a Christian. And then you go over here someplace else and say, well, you know, I can't, I can't say nothing to them because uh, they might, uh, they might uh, be offended. Well, that's just that. What I, what I would hope for is that this would help somebody to understand that we need to be more sincere with the Lord. You're right. We need to, we need to stop and think and, and and really get down to the business of serving the Lord, because it's uh, it's 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 winding up, people. The the thing is winding up, and uh, I want to be I want to be there standing before the Lord, not ashamed. Amen. And uh, I, I I think that maybe this is it's good for us all to, to to think about. So so that's our lesson for today, and I hope that uh, some of these things that that will you you kind of reach you and thank on and uh, maybe uh, come up with something. <coughs> Thank you.